Hi there, in one of my language lessons, Dutch language lessons, one of the students asked, hey, I'm learning a lot of vocabulary, but are there any tricks to um, understand the word without understanding? Are there any prefixes or suffixes that can help me to understand more? And yes, there are a few uh, prefixes and suffixes or little parts of words that are pasted at the end or the beginning of the word that can help you understanding a word. And let's see some of those in this video. Let's start with her. As in these examples, herhalen, repeat, herstellen, repair, hernieuwen, renew, and herdoen, to do again. So as you may have heard, these start with re. And this is actually what uh, her means, re. Mm -mm, something, for example, repeat. You said it once and you have to do it again. Repair, you have to fix. Well, it was good, but now you have to uh, repair. Uh, and herdoen, to do again. That's again something you repeat. All right. Second one is with ont. So that's ontdekken, to discover. Ontmoeting, a first meeting and ontwikkelen, to develop. And uh, ont means the or this, for example, discover, something you do for the first time. Uh, ontmoeting is also, well, when you meet someone for the first time, you kind of discover uh, how, to, how to do that and develop, well, it starts with the as well. All right, uh, third one is ver. And there's verhogen, verandering, and vertrekken. Uh, verhogen, to make higher, um, to heighten, I think, in English, not sure. Uh, verandering is to change, and vertrekken is to go away, to depart. And ver means uh, that you give some change to something. For example, verhogen, you're changing the amount, so verhogen or verlagen, uh, you uh, diminish the amount. Uh, verhogen is uh, to increase and uh, decrease, verlagen. Uh, uh, my brain works with a few uh, moments of, uh, yeah, I need sometimes a few moments to think. Uh, so verandering, that means well, literally a change. And vertrekken, you're switching places, so you're going to change places. Uh, next one is be, as in bekijken, beluisteren, and betrekken. Bekijken is to take a closer look, or to look at closely. Beluisteren means to listen to in detail, and betrekken is to involve. And this be means in detail, or closely. For example, bekijken, to look closely at something, or betrekken, to involve someone, to put someone closer to you when you're doing a project. All right, next one is over. Over is overheid, the government. Overslaan, uh, to skip. And um, over, um, over uur. That means, um, like the, the extra time you're doing at your job, over hours. Uh, that's an over uur. And over means above, on top of, or to skip. So, uh, overheid, the government, is above us. Uh, it has the power to do things. Uh, uh, overslaan is to skip. And over uur is something you do on top of uh, your normal hours. All right, so that's it for uh, over. Now, next one is when you're putting an adjective uh, and you add heid. For example, grootheid, snelheid, and kleinigheid. Grootheid means uh, it's something you would use to uh, determine something, someone who did something big. Uh, in, a, in a field. Like Einstein, uh, the scientist, was also a grootheid, like something, someone very important, something, someone very big for um, uh, 
um, for science. And snelheid means speed, and kleinheid means a little thing. Something that's not that important. So there you see an adjective plus head forms a noun. And usually when you um, understand the adjective, it will help you to understand the noun. Like groot head, uh, someone big. Uh, well, groot means big and head is just the thing you add there. All right. Uh, next one is uh, words ending with loose. And that is very similar to English. It means uh, less. For example, spraakloos, speechless. Waardeloos, worthless, and smaakloos, tasteless. So that's just lus as in English. Something that is not there. Uh, for example, smaak, taste, uh, it's tasteless, it doesn't have any taste. Loos just says, well, there is no taste. All right. And then our last one is ge. Gemaakt. Usually when a word starts with ge, it's the past participle. For example, uh, gemaakt, made, like an I have made. And this past participle, we're going to use it in one of the two main past tenses in Dutch. And if you want to learn more about it, feel free to click on the video there on top to learn everything about this past tense. All right. See you there.